I'm always trying to um, find the parallels between training and art, like physical training and um, art study, right? I'm always trying to find um, what I can take from both and apply to the other that will make it the, um, a better process. So the main difference and the main kind of thing that's halting that process right now is the fact that um, the gym and training um, revolves around programming and that program, well, and within that program you maintain a relatively rigid uh, routine. Whereas with art, the way it's currently going for me is um, it's a very fluid process, a very, um, a, it's a process that, that morphs into a different thing with each new thing I learn, right? So, perhaps a more, a wiser approach for me when it comes to art would be to would be to um implement a more kind of program implement a kind of like program uh, or a more rigid routine that would help um that would uh, take a little bit of brain power away from thinking about what to study and and trying to um trying to be creative in, in how I study um, which is kind of sad in a way but I think that my enthusiasm for actual training is as a result of the programming being there in the first place the rigidity of the programming allowing freedom within an enclosed space, which I think is important because if there's too much freedom to be had, and um, you just end up kind of oh I'll move on to this exercise and um, th- there's a concept called program hopping, um, which is kind of when you're um, impatient with your program and you um, you move to a different one because you just seen on the internet this week and. A person that you really, that you really admire um, is promoting this program, and they're like, "Oh, I'll do this, do this," and then you're like, "Okay, well, I've been on this other program for one week, but you know this one looks pretty good, so I'll, I'll switch over to that one now." It's kind of being impatient and being um, not trusting the process, right? Which is something that I've always had trouble with trusting the process. Um, the concept of making your own mistakes is something that is I consider to be both both a blessing and a curse. In the sense that, yes, it allows me to learn more profoundly from my mistakes because they're generally um, like greater. But it also um, stops me from trusting kind of um, set processes that I know work and that, pe- that people have told me that work um, just because I don't have trust in the process. Yeah. Um, so what was I saying? So yeah, so maybe um the 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 power of having programming um and not completely hundred percent strict programming, like slightly flexible programming in training. The benefits of that is that I can optimize what I'm doing, right? I can optimize that program, I can I can kind of I can go into each session, each training session with a goal that revolves around the specific program, it doesn't. It leaves me with very little to have to think about, other than hitting a PR on a set, other than hitting, um, you know the the required amount of weight for that session. It it it, it um allows me to have to think about what le- a lot less, which is good. But at the same time, me having to think a lot less isn't doesn't cause me to be less creative in how I approach or less like effective and and focused um I approach each workout right um it actually enhances that the rigidity of the program enhances my ability to focus my ability to um 
to make the most out of the session, which I think could be something that I could um, that could benefit me when studying art. So, for example, um, if, I use a, if I use a direct example, example of my training, right? My training right now is just um, front squats and some kind of posterior chain movement or hamstring movement. Um, and front squats, I, I'll do about four, four or five sets. So it's a pretty rigid, like, program. There's only two exercises, and, and they're, they're generally the same, or at least one of them is always the same. Um, but within that, I can have some flexibility. Like, I can have a little bit of flexibility in, you know, how many reps and sets I want to do of front squat, or a little bit of flexibility in which posterior chain exercise I move, in poster- posterior chain exercise I use, sorry. Um, you know, it could be because um, I'm I'm limited with my cast um, to only doing really um, hamstring curls or good mornings. Um, and my gym doesn't have a back extension ma- extension machine, so I can't do those. Um, but yeah, that rigidity rigidity really. Um, It gives me a box that I can run around in. Like, say um, you have like a, f- a field, a full, maybe a field like a, a, m- a massive hill of grass, right? And I wanted to discover all it was to disc- discover and explore every inch of that hill and understand it and learn about it completely. Um, a more effective method of doing that I think would be to section off the hill the fence fenced areas and then allow myself to run around those smaller areas and learn what I can about them before moving on to the next area. I think it's in a that kind of approach is something that my brain f- would favour. And maybe that'll change in the future. Um because I and I know that there definitely exist people who uh, Explore one part of the field, have no limits, explore one part of the field, and then, um, you know, move on to a different part and just eventually come to this kind of whole um, generalised conclusion about an understanding of the field, so. And I'm not sure if that's how my brain would prefer it. Maybe it would prefer the box off approach. Um, so that's what I want to try now, because my training definitely benefits from that, and for the most part, what benefits my physical training usually benefits my art- art- artistic training. Um, those, those parallels are very useful, I think. So um, I'm going to try this more like programming attempt, right? Um, I'm going to create like a, a relatively rigid program that I stick to, it, stick to daily. Um, they're going to have, you know, um, that they, they is flexible. It's still flexible, but it's still, um, in some ways, uh, rigid. Um, and I think that would be very, very uh, beneficial for my studying. Um, but on the topic of what on the topic of what I actually studied, um, today it was. Um, forms and so it was some rendering and it was some. But robotic stuff. Um, I'm trying to get better at like shapes and how shapes dictate form, and how interior silhouette can, or interior shapes, i.e. shapes that don't um, alter the silhouette significantly, how those interior shapes can um, can affect form within the um, within the silhouette within the character. Interesting forms and kind of like crisp forms is something that I really aspire to be able to create it's like one of my favourite aspects of uh, art in general is is form 3D form you know um, interesting forms Um, that and shapes shapes is really nice as well shapes are really nice I'm an idiot Um, but yeah obviously I I don't really put myself into any um, I don't put myself into any boxes in terms of what I'm willing to learn about in art um like yeah I'm a 2D concept artist who does specializing who does characters mainly 
but that doesn't mean I'm so ignorant as to say that I couldn't learn anything about the field that I'm doing, about the field that I'm in, from other fields, like, you know, 3D and 3D stuff, and environment stuff, and all that kind of thing. I mean, I couldn't be naive enough to say that those things are all useless to me, because I, because I don't do them, because I don't partake in them. No, there's um, a massive amount to be learned about my own field from these different fields. And um, sometimes I even use, I mean, a lot of the time, almost all the time, I use um, reference that would normally more obviously apply to these other fields to um, study things within my own field. Um, which goes to show that you can't let yourself get boxed in, or you can't let yourself get closed-minded, rather. You can, let, you can set parameters for yourself to allow you to focus a little bit easier, to kind of take away that burden of um, having to um, be excessively creative in terms of what to learn. So it takes some of that burden, like brain burden away. But that doesn't by any means mean that you should become close-minded. It's, it's about finding that balance. It's, um, it always comes, comes back to balance, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's weird. Um, it always comes, out, comes back to balance. Which is um, kind of the opposite of comforting. Because I think comfort lies in being close-minded a lot of the time. Like mental comfort lies in kind of being uh, um, close-minded in some but like close-minded in some way but then um, is having strict principles is that inherently close-minded that's the question that I've been asking myself because I've been searching for my own principles and my own values um, then this thought always crosses my mind well when I settle into this, um, this, uh, this um, list of strict rules, strict values, strict principles that can't be changed. When I settle into that, and when I um, set into those, and when I and when they become like stone, um, like concrete in my um, in my mind, in my heart, when, when they're there. Would that be the end of kind of um, exploration and um, experimentation and being open-minded? Um, I'm not sure. That is something that I really need to figure out. Um. <sighs> but yeah, got a bit philosophical towards the end there. Um, but that's all for today. Um, yeah, have a nice day. Bye.